Hey, this is Chris from Record Talk. Um, so I'm doing a contest video. This is for Ron Haggerty's Vinyl Pasta. So he prompted us for his contest to do our favorite year in music. And I've been debating between a few of the years in the early 1990s, which is kind of my wheelhouse for music. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of like grunge and alternative rock that particular era of hip-hop and the like. I was kind of torn between 1992 and 1993. Then Gav's music trip had a contest that was based upon the year you turned 23, which for me was 1992. So that kind of made my decision. I did 92 for his contest. And Ron, I'm going to do 1993 for your contest. So um, he gave us some prompts. So first prompt, overrated. No prompt, no prop uh, for this prompt. Counting Crows, August and everything after. Never liked it. Doubt I ever will. Uh, number two, underrated. I'm going to show a couple of things for underrated. The first is going to be an album that people talk about all the time as an underrated album from the 1990s. So this is the Afghan Wigs. This is their album, Gentlemen. Um, this is... I would say my favorite Afghan Wigs album. If I were going, Gentlemen, um, What Jail is Like, that's probably track number seven. That's probably the best song. But Greg Dooley and the guys from Cincinnati, I think this was their major label debut on Elektra Records. People talk about this as underrated all the time. Here's a record nobody ever talks about. The Fluid Purple Metal Flake Music. So this was Denver's uh, sort of entry into the grunge world. Um, this band had actually been the first, although uh, Afghan Wigs also did a stint on Sub Pop, The Fluid was actually the first non-Pacific Northwest band ever signed to Sub Pop, did a little with them in the late 80s. So this was their major label debut, Hollywood Records. Um, turned out to be their only major label record as the label pretty much screwed them over, this wasn't promoted, band fell apart, um, and um, then so kind of a sad story there. Uh, My kind, the opening track is just this is one like one of the best um, sort of heavy alternative tracks out there, and you've probably never heard it, but I really like the fluid purple metal flake music, and even the. Uh, it's it's kind of shiny it's shiny and flaky so uh, never really worked out for those guys uh, next prompt was a comeback album I kind of struggled with this prompt I'll be honest at that point in my life I wasn't really looking back to uh, like legacy bands I wasn't looking at uh, those those bands that were like popular in the 70s and 80s so I kind of came up with this. This is going to feel like a cop-out. I'm going to do Paul Westerberg, 14 songs. So this was a solo debut. The replacements had, uh, had ended a few years before that. So I guess in a sense it's a comeback. But that's probably not the greatest answer for that question. Um, next prompt was to pick a debut. So here it is, Bjork. Uh, what did she call this album? Well... I don't think you can read it, but she called it. It's on. It's on this white print. The art debut. The album's called debut. This really just missed my top five as well, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. So um, she she had been in the Icelandic band, the Sugar Cubes, and then this was her breaking out on her own. Wish list for me. Um, Juliana Hatfield 3, Become What You Are, on vinyl. It was never released on vinyl in the U.S. Apparently, uh, it did exist on vinyl in Europe. It's basically unobtainium, unless you want to spend a couple hundred bucks. Um, that record is, is has yet never been reissued on vinyl. So and Then uh, the band Slow Dive, so they're sort of dream pop, uh, shoegaze, Seems like the kind of band I should like, and I've never picked up any of their material. So their album, Suvlaki, 
which is also tasty Greek food. Um, so I'll put that on my wish list. And that's probably more reasonable than the unobtainium um, record. So now we're supposed to do our top five. Before I do that, kind of like what I did with Gavs, I'm going to do a very quick run through other bands that I considered but didn't use. So we got Smashing Pumpkins, Breeders, Mazzy Star, Fish, Depeche Mode, Belly, The Cure with some live records, Pearl Jam, Uncle Tupelo, Luscious Jackson, Cracker, Subido, Dinosaur Jr., Betty Severe, Unrest, The Lemonheads, Cranberries, U2, Rocket from the Crypt, Buffalo Tom, Sugar Antenna, Snoop Dogg, Giant Sand, Morphine, Blues Traveler, Big Hit, Dad and the Monsters, all did not make my top five. My top five. We have, this may be my favorite hip hop record of all time. If it's not my favorite hip hop record, it's pretty close. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I'm not a big hip hop guy. And probably that late 80s, early 90s is probably the only time I really followed the genre. Uh, I pretty much have white guy taste in uh, rap, but Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers by the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, and I'm actually, get, I'm actually gonna be getting an upgrade of this. I'm gonna be getting it on two discs rather than one. My number four, this is something I recently upgraded from CD to vinyl. Some PJ Harvey, Rid of Me, the famous or infamous Steve Albini uh, recording. Uh, lots of people didn't like it, but I do. Number three, what we talked about, I want to have this on vinyl. I do have it on CD. Bought it in 1993, still have it. Juliana Hatfield 3, Become What You Are. So there's the top of Juliana's head. And then her and the, the band on the back. Um, number two, Nirvana in Utero. So I've been working on upgrading the Nirvana to vinyl. I haven't gotten to in Utero yet, but that's gonna be my number two for 1993. Penny Royal T is my favorite uh, Nirvana song of all time, which is on that. My number one is gonna be Liz Fair's best album by a long shot. Liz Fair, Exile in Guyville. I mean, I would give this serious consideration if I was picking my top record for the decade. It's it's gonna be in that conversation as far as I'm concerned. So it wins out for me for 1993. So, hope you like that, Ron.